When I was 17, I started to have a lot of nightmares. That was kind of how things started. And then when I was ironically coming out of my AP psychology class and I had my first visual hallucination of a flying grape, it was a grape that had wings. I think it started when I was 23. Gradually, the voices just kind of happened and I felt that I wasn't supposed to share it and whatnot at first, because I, I thought I was doing something wrong, I guess, or something. Psychosis is something that people experience where they are in some way, shape, or form detached from the reality around them. So often it, it plays itself out like a hallucination. So people may experience uh, hearing something that isn't there. Often, for many of my patients, they will also experience the feeling that people are watching them or following them for some reason. But it is a state of experience where there's something that they feel is happening that others around them can't verify is happening. It's not necessarily a diagnosis in and of itself, so different diagnostic categories will fall under that umbrella. Things like schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder with psychotic features. Generally speaking, we see the onset of psychosis as being a kind of slow progression over time, usually in late childhood, early adolescence. Usually with sort of non-specific symptoms of depression, anxiety, grades might be declining, maybe not spent hanging out with friends as much. The challenge there is we're also talking about adolescence. A lot of times when I see people for the first time, they might say, you know, it seems a bit odd, but I feel like I'm hearing my name called. I feel like people are following me. It doesn't make sense, but I feel like it's happening. By the time they have psychosis, they would no longer generally be able to talk themselves out of it. And so they would feel like with, with real certainty that something is happening to them or that they're really hearing voices from outside their head. What causes psychosis has been debated and I think will continue to be debated. There are things that we know um, have very strong correlations with onset. Adverse childhood experiences and traumas can make someone more vulnerable to experiencing psychosis, experiencing unemployment or homelessness, um, poverty, racism, discrimination. Maybe there is a family history, kind of genetic or even substance uh, use can trigger someone's first um, experience of psychosis as well. He refused to see, because he was so paranoid, refused to see his psychiatrist. When it was nighttime, he was in full-blown psychotic mania, and he would be wandering around upstairs. He came down one day and said to me, this would be in the spring, I, I can't control the voices, Mom, I can't. I've been trying and trying and I can't. That was the first time that he was cognitive enough or maybe had come up enough to be able to ask for help. And my goal that whole year was to keep him alive. And so we got him to El Camino Hospital and that's where he was admitted for three months on many antipsychotics. And that's where the doctor told me he was very, very sick and it was gonna take a long time and didn't know how far we'd be able to come back from this. I started to really struggle with telling the difference between what was a nightmare and what was reality during the day because I was kind of having those nightmares at night and then during the day I was having visual and auditory hallucinations that became really quite constant at that point. And so the reality line just completely went away. I could very genuinely never tell when I was dreaming or when I was awake. My mom was a great support, thankfully. She was always really believed me and immediately listened to me and tried to get me into support. I started on a very long road of trying different psychiatric medications, antipsychotics, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications.
Within the INSPIRE clinic, we work with individuals primarily with early psychosis presentations, but certainly see people with sort of across the age spectrum and varying degrees of chronicity. The sooner we can get in to provide effective interventions and supports, the better the outcomes are. Some of the things that we do in the INSPIRE clinic that make us unique in the community is our emphasis on psychotherapy. The other thing is we are on the forefront of clinical trials, so we're often testing out medicines that are on their way, hopefully, to the market. We also work with a number of basic scientists, and so, you know, it's Stanford, so we have, acts, we have people who are trying all kinds of treatments and, and thinking about things in a different way. We work in an interdisciplinary team, um, and that we're, we're looking to critique what we're doing, to constantly pivot and adapt, to be curious, meet people where they're at. Um, and not try to push anything on anyone. Which means that we want to, as providers, take the time to understand our clients' cultural backgrounds and beliefs, what is congruent with their beliefs and what is not, what's causing distress, and understanding the problem at the outset of, of therapy. It's taken me a couple years to like be, get back in the groove and be like more normal, no more paranoia. But the voices are still there. They just got a lot better. And I learned some tools to ignore them and just like be better at living with them. I had a lot of success around other symptoms and experiences I had, including kind of paranoia and delusions. And still now I, I hallucinate uh, every, every day. That experience has never gone away. With visuals, one of my biggest kind of strategies is actually my, my dog. I have a 11 pound dachshund and she is the friendliest dog. And so if I'm seeing something and she doesn't respond to it, I know very clearly that it's not there because she always responds to everyone that's around. Individuals with psychosis have just very, very varied and different experiences. So if we think about psychosis and recovery, it's almost like it's this end point that everyone's sort of striving to, but really what recovery looks like for the individual can be varied as well. And so that what we would try to do within our clinic is work with an individual to get a real sense of what personally meaningful recovery looks like for them. I wouldn't be able to do the work I do if I didn't think that there was recovery. So I have a number of people who I work with who have found themselves coming to me initially in the hospital with severe symptoms, who've gone on to graduate from college, who have gotten married and have had children, who are working in all different kinds of jobs. You wouldn't necessarily know that many of my patients have psychosis if you walk past them on the street. I was diagnosed in 2012, and unfortunately that was just a bit before the Inspire Clinic opened at Stanford. But I did find it in another way. I was hired there in late 2022. I am pursuing my doctorate. I'm going to be doing the joint master's and PhD program starting this fall. I'm very excited. I'm really hoping to continue to work in research and better systems of care that we currently utilize to, to support individuals living with psychosis. I've made a lot of progress. There's like a good balance for the medication. I'm exercising. There's definitely some room to improve, but I feel nowadays a lot more normal and back to like my normal self. I'm going to a junior college in San Jose. Right now it's a general education, but I plan on transferring and studying physics. It's basically how the world works, like applied math, and I'm pretty good at math. I don't really know what I want to do with it yet. I just know that I can use it in multiple jobs. I'm doing well in school, and I'm just feeling a lot better than I used to. So yeah, I definitely feel like there's a future. There is probably more that we don't understand about what we call psychosis than there is in what we actually do. Psychosis can look like very many different things. I think as a Western society, we have an idea of how people should be operating in the world. And certainly individuals with psychosis can operate in that way. And others might have a different way of, of going on a path that feels really meaningful for them and feels like a real progression. For many people, 
with psychosis, there's absolutely opportunity for, you know, a quote unquote regular, regular life. Now that doesn't mean that it's easy always to get there. It often takes a lot of work, but it's a challenge we're here to help with and that many people are able to succeed with. Some, some are not, but, but many people certainly are and, and we're here to celebrate the successes and to try to help the folks who are struggling just the same. Thank <laughs> you.